a warning to my readers. Do not think me gentle because I speak in praise of gentleness or elegant because I honor the grace that keeps this world. I am a man crude as any, gross of speech, intolerant, stubborn, angry, full of fits and furies, that I may have spoken well at times is not natural, a wonder is what it is. <laughs> the contrariness of the mad farmer. I am done with apologies. If contrariness is my inheritance and destiny, so be it. If it is my mission to go in at exits and come out at entrances, so be it. I have planted by the stars in defiance of the experts and tilled somewhat by incantation and by singing and reaped as I knew by luck and heaven's favor in spite of the best advice. There's no justification for the permanent destruction of the world. My belief, and I've written out of it for many years, is that the world and our life in it are conditional gifts. We have the world to live in and the use of it to live from on the condition that we will take good care of it. And to take good care of it, we have to know it, and we have to know how to take care of it. And to know it, and to be willing to take care of it, we have to love it. And we've ignored all that all these years. You wrote quite recently that the two great aims of industrialization, replacement of people by technology, and the concentration of wealth in the hands of a small plutocracy seem, in your words, close to fulfillment. What do you think, from your life's experience, might stall the momentum and perhaps even reverse it? I don't know. Um, there are two or three things that we haven't been able to confront or even acknowledged politically. One is that the aim of the Industrial Revolution from year one has been to replace people with technology. So it's a little contemptible to hear these people express in surprise at this late date that we have an unemployment problem. <laughs> the other thing that we are having trouble confronting, and I, both sides are having got trouble to confront it publicly and speak of it, is the disaster of being governed by the corporations, those fictitious persons. And, um, uh, you know, you're waiting for the day when some politician of stature and visibility will finally say, we can't have this any longer. We're here in Washington or Frankfurt to represent the people, not to be employed or bought by the corporations and to serve them. What have you come to understand is the natural logic of capitalism? That you have a right to as much as you want of anything you want. And by extension, uh, the right to use any means available to get it.